Hi guys, welcome to the replay. If you're catching me live, please type in the chat bar that you're watching. Say hello, let me know where you're watching from and what you've been up to this week. I hope everybody's had a wonderful week and is getting ready for a great rest of their week with a fun weekend ahead and they're crafting and creating and doing something wonderful. I can't wait to hear what you're up to. I'm going to give it just a minute and let the live feed catch up so that everybody can get their notifications and jump on and join me. There we go. That was pretty quick. Hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. I hope you're having a great day today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of prep and then I'm going to surprise you guys with what we've got going on. Let's get all of this ready to go. We're going to do the, vin the vintage Christmas tree. Hey, Risa, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. We're going to do the vintage Christmas tree today. We're going to do it with a twist. Something I have not seen done yet. So I hope this is going to be a first. And I hope it's going to work. We'll find out together. Oh, as always, my candy apple needs a spritz of, of water. So there we go. Give it a nice stir. I'm only going to use two layers of the vintage Christmas tree today. I'm going to use layer number two and layer number three because I found layer number one at Dollar Tree. I cannot believe how great this is going to work if it works. We'll find out. It is the perfect size for this transfer, which is a little bit on the large side. So let me grab some stuff and show you what I'm talking about. So at the Dollar Tree, they have this lovely tree that comes with all these pre-cut uh, decorations to go on it. It also comes with a snowflake that you put at the tip of it and a hanger that goes on the back. Well, I'm going to utilize that snowflake to hide the hanger in place of the star that we have on the vintage Christmas tree because <clears throat> the base of this thing is green felt and it matches up perfectly with our vintage Christmas tree. So I thought, well, let's see if we can't put the packages across the bottom, put some ribbons on it. It'll have a little bit of a, of a space at the base of the tree. So here we have the area that is the base of the tree from the bottom, the packages to the bottom of the hanger, and we've got a wall hanging. I thought I would start out and do some classic colors. So we're going to do red for the ribbons and white for the shine and the detail since we're not having that first layer. I don't know how great this is going to work. The chalk paste may actually soak into the felt really, really quickly. We're just going to try it and hope that it works. I'm not doing the star, so I'm just going to come up here and start applying our paste pulling it over this silk screen decoration as I work my way down. I'm using the multi-tool to do this. You could certainly use a squeegee. The angled squeegee would work. The medium, the small size squeegee would work. The small squeegee cut in half would work. It's really your preference. I want to have a little bit of control, a little extra control, so I'm going to go ahead with the multi-tool. Hi, Donna Lee. Thanks for joining. Hope you've had a great day. I've been seeing videos. I am so proud of everybody for doing their live videos. Y'all are just the best. This team has just made my day, made my month, made my year. You guys are just fantastic. Okay, maybe this multi-tool is a little bit on the small side because we do have to work quickly. So I'm going to get a big amount of paste on there, grab my small squeegee that I've cut in half, and we're going to get to cover it a little bit quicker because I'm really concerned about it drying in the silk screen. We don't want that to happen. 
I'm not going to do the registration marks, one, because I don't think it's necessary. I'll be able to match up the ribbons quite easily, but also I don't want to leave those marks on the felt. And I can tell that this is really soaking in, so I'm hoping it's going to give us a nice bright red. It might be a little bit on the faded side, but I think that the white that we're going to put over the top of it to create the shine effect and all of those ornament details is really going to make it pop. At least that's my hope. Just filling in a couple of little areas and I'm going to add a little bit more up here at the top where it's dried. We're just being super, super generous with it. Pulling off the excess now, and I'm going right back in the jar with it. Because red, oh my goodness, red is a commodity, isn't it? I'm so happy that we had the restock today. Looks like this spot over here really needs some more. So let's go ahead and lay some down. Okay. Here we go with the reveal. Oh my goodness, it looks like it worked. That is fantastic. That is just fantastic. The felt is a Christmas tree decoration that I found at Dollar Tree. I could not even believe it. When I saw that, I thought to myself, huh, I wonder if this is going to be a good size. And you know, this is a fairly large transfer, but I didn't know the dimensions of it. So I bought one just to see if maybe it was going to work, and it worked perfectly. Okay, I'm going to grab the heat tool and try to dry this. I don't know how it's going to react with the felt, so we'll find out together. Actually, before I do that, let me bring it up a little bit to the camera so you guys can see the color a little bit better. I noticed that it's rather dark in the camera, so I hope y'all can see that a little bit better. All right, grabbing the, the heat tool. Hopefully it's not going to shrink on us. We'll find out. Okay, just like on any hard surface, you can see the, the paste dry. It goes from a shiny to a matte as it dries. I'm going to let this come back up to room temperature. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to grab the next transfer. Grab a drink of water. kind of feels tacky. I don't know. It's very different doing this on fabric and uh, on felt as a fabric as um, compared to doing it on a hard surface. I'm not sure that it's completely dry. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun one more time. If I had a blow dryer, that would definitely be what I'd use, but I don't have a blow dryer in handy. Okay. 
definitely warm, so it's going to need just a minute to cool back down. Feels less tacky. None of it's coming off on my hands, so I think we might be okay. And certainly, because this is not a flat, hard surface, I don't think that it's going to lift off of the fabric. I believe that it's probably well within those fibers. Now matching it up. I don't know about this. Oh my goodness. I'm really just eyeballing, hoping, hoping and a praying, wishing and a hoping. Okay, I see that it's off a little bit up here, so let me move that over. That's going to move everything else over, but I think that's okay. Still looks good. Definitely the hard part. Okay, I've got red shining through in lots and lots of places, so I think it's going to be good to go. Let's just cross our fingers and see. Donna Lee, that shimmer pink is really, really tacky. And I always hit it with a heat gun and let it dry overnight before I do anything else with it. That's a little bit different than the recommendations I've seen other people make. But I want to make sure that it's really good and dry before I go to heat set it on anything. Okay. Here goes some white paste. I'm going to be rather generous again with this white paste really globbed it on. That is hopefully way more. I know it's soaking into the fibers, so it may actually be just right, but we're going to find out. And we're not doing the top star because we're going to be using a um, snowflake ornament that came with this kit to uh, make a hanger for the back of it. No fibers from the felt are coming through. The felt is rather stiff. It definitely has been treated with something. Possibly starch, I'm not sure, but it comes that way from Dollar Tree. And who can beat a surface that's a dollar? This is just too easy. Pull the excess off and come down here and hit these areas. I'm going to need a little more on my squeegee just to get the bottom because I don't want it to look bare. I do have some white on there, but it's really showing through thinly. Okay, excess is going right back in the jar. And now I'm just going to go over it to knock down any lines that may be there. So do you see some of the lines? And let's peel and reveal. Oh, it was a little bit off, but for the most part, I think it's good. Wow. Look at that, you guys. I hope you can see it well in the light. I'm going to give it a second. And let the lag catch up. It comes with this snowflake decoration that goes on the front like so. And then it has a hanger at the back that's red that you sandwich between another um, round piece that hides everything on the back. I like it. 
something a little bit different, but it works so well with this transfer. And I have to say, this was super easy. I've done this transfer, I've done this design now a dozen times, I think, and getting it on and off of um, the hard surfaces, some, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. And I find that using a board that's not a chalk couture board, it's very very common that it that one layer pulls up the ink or the paste from the layer beneath it and I have done it with ink as well so that's why I say that okay I'm gonna dry it Alrighty. Now, I thought about glittering this, and if I was going to glitter it, I would certainly do it before I dry it, because you want the glitter to get into the ink, uh, the ink or the paste so that it has something to adhere to. And then when you dry it, that glitter is going to stay really solid on it. I was a little bit concerned about the fibers of the glitter um, mixing with the fibers of the felt, so that's why I opted not to do any of the um, glitter tonight. I thought this would be just a good way to chest it out. And I really like how the ink, the uh, paste kind of soaked in and it mixed the colors together because I was thinking of doing this in a pink. And so it kind of made a pink as it went with the white and the red. This would make great refrigerator decoration with some magnets on the back. You are so right, Donna Lee. That's a great idea. <clears throat> and just a little something different. I love the versatility of our products. That turned out great. So yeah, you can order online from Dollar Tree. I don't know what their minimums are for this particular design, um, and I don't know if there's other things in it, like it might be a box that comes with other shapes. I really have no idea because my Dollar Tree had just unpacked the box and put a couple of these out on the shelf. They got a lot of new decorations in today, so we're going to have to see how all of that plays out. But you can order these from DollarTree.com if you don't have them in your local store or if you don't have a Dollar Tree near you. Um, of course, you have to get quite a few, so if you wanted to do something like that, you can always put a post up in our group and ask if anybody would like to go in on something like that, so that if it's a matter of buying a case of 144, which a lot of their items are come in cases of 144, um, we could certainly split those up. I think we've got 28 designers in the group. We have a few more than that um, who haven't joined the group yet, but I think there's 28 that are actually members or something very close to that. So if, you, if that's something you wanted to do, never hesitate to go on and post, hey, I found this and I'd like to buy it, but I have to buy X number. Is there anybody who wants to go in? That's really That's really fine with me. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for tonight and get on to my next project here in a few minutes. So you may see me back live again. Um, I hope you'll come back and join me if you're able to. But nonetheless, y'all have a great rest of your evening. Remember to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and happy crafting. <laughs>